October 17, 2005. Police respond to a call from a residential block and find a man on the sidewalk with a single gunshot wound to his head. Paramedics rush the victim to the hospital, but he dies upon arrival. The victim is an unknown 22-year-old male, new to the streets of Binghamton. He had no family in the area, and what we've been told, no real close friends. One of the street names he had was uh, P. The crime scene consisted of the victim lying near a sidewalk with one boot off and knotted wraps of crack cocaine and money strewn about in and around the area. With my narcotics background, I could tell you that he was probably being robbed and he was taking the boot off to get his money and his drugs out of it and a struggle ensued and he was shot. A witness comes forward who saw the victim hanging out with a young woman before he was shot. The detective soon ID the woman as 19-year-old Tallulah Gillespie, who lived down the street from the crime scene. Tallulah was located not too far away from the crime scene, and she had been on parole for about a month. Back in 2003, we had a rash of uh, grocery store robberies. Tallulah Gillespie was developed as a suspect. When I first brought uh, Tallulah into the police station, she was very uh, quiet, shy. She admitted to everything, uh, all three robberies, and uh, she was charged as such. Tallulah just finished 19 months of jail time for the robberies and was out on parole. Tallulah was picked up and brought in for questioning. With no eyewitnesses to the shooting, Redner and Martino must get a confession to solve this case. I'm not beating around the bush. I'll tell you, we know you were the last one with them. And? So what? You were the last one to see him alive. And you were there. No, I wasn't. Tallulah learned a lot of stuff when she was away in prison. And it was very apparent when we initially got in the room with her that it was going to be a fight to get a consistent flow of conversation. We knew that we had to take control immediately of this interview. People told us they seen you with a gun. Okay. They seen me with a gun? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A witness placed her with a handgun. We needed her to admit that she possessed a gun during that time frame. They saw you with the gun, with Pete. The one what, walking around saying you had a gun? You saw it in your hand. He had a gun. I ain't got a gun. Did you hold his gun for him once in a while? Were you holding it for him so he didn't get checked? It wasn't my gun. But you were holding it, right? A little quick second. Tallulah finally admits she handled the gun. She admitted she held it for a little bit, and that actually was a big victory. I'm going to chill, right? Once she started to talk that way, we had to be careful that she didn't ask for an attorney. If she would have, at that point, requested an attorney, we would have been over with. It felt like she'd taken a step ahead of us and that uh, we were losing her. She was uh, distancing herself successfully from what took place and that we needed to get control of that. Before the interrogation falls apart, Redner tries to throw Tallulah off guard. I'm going to tell you something right now. I told you I'd tell you that it would surprise you. Yes. OK? The other night when you had the gun, I said that two people saw you with it? Yes. OK, one of them was P. He said it was your gun. He's alive? Technically, yeah. What do you mean, technically? He's been shot. He's still alive. He's still alive? Yeah. That was probably the biggest deception technique I ever used, but it was for pure shock value, just to get her thinking, to get her off guard. During interviews, you fly by the seat of your pants, and uh, we knew we had one, one witness, but I always wanted to make another. Redner and Martino want to see how she reacts to this new information alone.
she was sobbing, crying, very upset. And we knew we, we had her. She can be tough with us, but alone, she started being herself. <laughs> well, you gotta get right back in there. We don't have the statement yet. You know, we've done a good job up to this point, but that good job won't mean a thing unless we get this statement. I think you're feeling bad and you want to let it out and... I'm not feeling bad about nothing. <laughs> you are feeling bad. You're scared? I just f came home. I know you just came home and you don't want to go back, so let's talk about what happened. And that's exactly what's going to happen. What, if you tell us the truth? I don't know what you're talking about. If the truth doesn't come out, you won't be able to say it with self-defense. You won't be able to get offer an explanation. You're gonna look like a cold-blooded person. We had to tell her we know you did it, and now is the time to tell us why. So little we know what happened. We know what happened. Please help us help you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it'll make you feel better. What happened? I was walking down the street. This idiot. <laughs> and in the dark next to the tree, he hit me up. <laughs> then what? I get a move. He had me pushed up against the tree. <laughs> He tried to rape me. Tell me what happened then. <laughs> and then I made a diversion. I said, it's not your friend over there. And you turned me. And that's why I pulled up the gun. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt him. <laughs> and that's when you shot him? Yeah. Once uh, Tallulah finally comes clean. Um, there's a weight lifted off our shoulders. You know that you've achieved exactly what you've needed to achieve. But uh, when we're giving her the opportunity of a possible self-defense, we 100% know that is not the reason that this incident took place. The physical evidence at the scene indicated a drug ripoff. And the physical evidence would not support a claim of self-defense in the case of a attempted rape or a physical assault. It, it was a, a chess match that was a pretty hard one to win, but it was pretty gratifying in the end.